What's up everyone, it's an I saw here and today I'm gonna do an EDC update on the Hogue Deca. So I got this knife in early April, so it's been about three months of use with this knife ever since I got it. And while I haven't carried it every day, I would say that it's been my most carried knife over that period of time. And I think that these EDC update videos are much better than my initial reviews just because I've had a lot more use with the knives. So I think I have a greater understanding and explain and I can explain more to you guys. So let's get into the base like the fit and finish of this knife. And it has overall been very nice. We are pretty much perfectly centered. And then no blade play, no lock rock. The able lock has worked great. The G10 handle scales are nicely knocked down and pretty much no complaints at all with the fit and finish. I did have to use the warranty with Hogue and it was a overall great experience. I have a video on that, but just a shorter version is I stripped out these screws or I didn't strip them out. I just messed up the internals of them trying to put on this deep carry clip. So I would suggest not to do that. Um, that's the MXG gear clip for a ZT. I believe it's 0450. So I think some people said that um, it works for the Hogue Deca, but it doesn't. And I know that Bearded Gear, he had a video on the same thing. He had the same problem that happened to me. And so don't do that. I would suggest to stay away. And I'll get into the carry, but this clip is not really bad at all. But anyway, um, so fit and finish has been really nice. When it got back from warranty, it was off-centered and it did have some blade play, but I just tightened it up to where it was centered and then there was no blade play when it was like that. And so that's great. No blade play, no lock, rock, and centered. What more can I complain about? So onto the able lock, just how it's been. This able lock feels very strong. Like I feel like this lock is very trustworthy. I feel like with some bench maids, I don't know. It just doesn't feel that durable. My action here is a little bit slower because that's how I like my axis locks, but I mean, I'll talk about that more later. But anyway, the able lock has been fine. It is a little bit sharp here, so if you were to open and close this knife constantly, it might be a little bit of a problem, but I don't really care about that. I actually think it provides some better grip, which is a good thing. There are some, I, I believe the Omega Springs that Hogue uses are a little bit more reinforced than the Benchmade's. I haven't had one break on this, and so everything's been fine with this locking mechanism, if not better than Benjamin's axis lock, but there's not really, it's it's a very close comparison. So onto the blade, this is where it gets a little bit different. So I have sharpened this knife a couple times. I've mostly stropped it, but I think I've sharpened it two or three times. So I just measured before this video, it's about 21 thousandths at the base here, while at the belly, it's about 19 thousandths. And at the tip, it goes up to 22 thousandths. So I do not think that that has been inconsistent from Hogue having it 21 thousandths here and 19 thousandths here. I believe that is on me when sharpening because when I'm sharpening, I probably form a bigger burr on this flat area just because it's easier to reach. And I don't get the belly enough when I'm going like that. I just don't spend enough time on it. So that's probably my fault. I'd say it's probably about 20 thousandths if you're getting this from the factory. So I would like that to be a lot thinner, especially I think they definitely have the potential to keep it thinner because let me give you guys a stock thickness on this. And I know that stock thickness does not at all correlate to thickness behind the edge, but I think it is important to show. So 0 0.085, that is very, very thin stock, much thinner. I'll give a size comparison for you guys. Here is a paramilitary two. Yeah, this is a extremely thin stock. And so I think that they had the potential to get this knife thinner behind the edge, but they just really didn't do it. And I would have liked to seen a hollow grind just because I don't like my knives to thicken up every time I sharpen them. But a flat grind is fine. I just wish that it was thinner behind the edge and I could go with a hollow grind. So onto this 20 CV steel, it's been a little bit iffy. So the edge retention, it's fine. I haven't noticed much. To be totally honest, I cannot tell the difference between 20 CV and S35 VN in use. I just can't. I'm just not paying that much close attention to it, but it drops up fine. So, and I did notice some edge rolling here towards this belly and the tip area. And so I think that this 20 CV might be a little bit on the softer side. And that's kind of unfortunate because 20 CV or like M390, that whole family, it can be really good. But a lot of times these production companies don't get it to a good HRC. And Hogue did have their HRC on their website. And it was, I think it was like 60 to 62, not entirely sure on that. But 
I think that this feels more like 58, 59, but I, that is just a complete guess. So I don't really know. I'd have to get this rock well tested, which I don't really plan on doing. But anyway, so, uh, so yeah, I did have some rolling in this blade and I don't really like that. I wish that I'd honestly rather have chips than rolls. I think that basically shows that it's a little bit stronger, but I, I don't really know. So the blade shape, on to a different thing than the 20 cv i really like this blade shape this clip point i think is very good with this belly here the tip is very nice for tasks that can use a tip i feel like a lot of times people get drawn away from these clip point blades because if you're doing something straight down it's a little bit harder to access the tip you kind of have to bend your wrist up like this but the main way i use a tip is basically if i'm opening a package and you basically have to insert the knife and then cut like that that's the main time I can use this tip, and that's really, um, it does it fine. You have good access to the tip, and so it's good. Usually when I'm cutting something like cardboard, I'll set the cardboard on this part right here, and then let the belly catch it, and then push down. And so, yeah, I don't know why I'm explaining that, but I really do like this blade shape, and I think it looks good. This Cerakote finish on the blade does look a little bit worn, because I have used this knife probably more than I use my other knives. If I'm doing, like, yard work or just something around the house that's probably going to be more dirty or hard use, I will put this knife in my pocket. Not hard use. Everyone has a different definition of hard use. Some people think it is batoning firewood uh, when you're camping. Some people think it is cutting something other than cardboard. And that's probably me. But anyway, onto the carry of this knife. And the carry has been really good. So, this pocket clip, like I said, after I switched out the pocket clip, I basically realized... I don't need a deep carry clip. I just, I really don't. And this pocket clip sits right on this, or I don't think it sits right on the heavily textured G10, but it, it is a little bit of a tight tension. And so it is a little bit difficult to pull out like your, maybe your pocket or your gym shorts because this knife is light enough to carry in shorts like that. And so basically what happens is when I pull it out, it kind of yanks my entire pocket. Not that big of a deal because that's almost every knife with a decent clip when pulling it out of gym shorts. And so really no complaints with the carry here. The carry profile of this knife is so good. Like it can fit completely inside the PM2 here. It is just a very nice carry profile. And I carry my wallet in the same pocket as my knife. So that is actually starting to matter more to me. The actual carry profile of the knife. It's very easy to reach past. The only uh, issue I guess I could complain about is some people really like a deep carry. And with this lightweight and sort of small knife, they're really going to miss that. Not that big of a deal to me. But this thumb stud, like I said, is a little bit sharp. Same with the axis lock. And so this does scratch up my wallet a bit. But I don't really care about how, if my wallet's scratched up or not. So anyway, on to the... Uh, where am I? Yep, I'm already on the ergos of this knife. So a thing that comes up with this knife a lot is that at its base, this is a solid knife. It's a good knife. But I feel like it could be a little bit improved. Not that there's things just straight up wrong with it. It just could be improved. Like I said with the blade, this is thicker behind the edge than I would like. And it's not too thick, but I think it could be improved. And same thing with the ergo. So the ergos are fine right here uh, in this like choke back saber grip. That's probably where they feel the best. I cannot feel the clip at all, which is really good. And when I'm in this choke back saber grip, this jimping lands right where my thumb wants it to. I don't really need the jimping and it's not too strong, which is a good thing. And so I think that the ergonomics in this choke back grip is really good. The ways I can see the ergonomics can improve, can be improved, is if this was flat right here. It is not that big of a increase or like an uphill increase, I guess, but it would be just be playing on better. Another reason why the ergonomics are good is because this back here is pretty much flat. So that creates full surface contact with your hand. Let me give an example of that. It's in my pocket today, but this is Benza. Just very simple ergonomics, this back is flat. And so when you're gripping out hard, it feels very nice in your hand. And so, yes, it's the same with this one. The way ergonomics could be improved, like I said, if this was straight, I believe you might be able to mod that because the liners of the, the able lock are not really interfering with this part, but you might get close to the clip, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, also if there was contouring on this handle scale, this is just flat. I think that would have been a little bit better. And if you are gripping down hard, 
this texturing right here sometimes it roughs up your hands a little bit and i know that they can do contouring because on the ho gritter they have contouring so i don't really know ergonomics would have been better they're contoured if this was flattened out a little bit but they are not bad at all they are solid ergonomics and i think that they really excel in different grips other than the stroke back saber grip they're not amazing if you're just in a like straight up hammer grip i mean they're not bad but your thumb kind of has a weird spot to land just this little divot area i feel like that's digging in the back of your thumb but i really like using this pinch grip with this knife um sometimes i put my middle finger up here my pointer finger all the way up here and then i can do a draw cut with it and i'm not really that close to the blade but and when i'm doing draw cuts i wouldn't do anything that would risk me cutting myself so overall ergonomics are pretty good but they just could be a little bit better so i was talking about the action a little bit earlier and the action has been fine i really have no complaints i can flick it out it deploys every time but i probably mostly thumb roll it out whenever i'm just opening a knife ready to cut something and the closing action, the way I like my axis locks, that actually kind of dropped a little bit. But I like it where I disengage the lock, it won't fall close. And so I will have to give it a little bit of a shake close. But that's honestly fine with me. I did the same thing with my Hogue Ritter. Or actually, I think this came like this. But it won't fall shut. I actually have to shake it close. And so I'm happy with that. And I think it's great. And I think I've grown to not care as much about a fall shut action. And I think that's honestly just because I've been carrying more automatic knives and I'm like, I really like how they flick out and I don't care how they go back in because usually when I do an EDC task, I open the knife one handed and that's important to me. And then I do the task and then I usually have my hands freed up. A lot of times I'm holding something that needs to be cut. So one hand opening is important to me, but one hand closing isn't all that important to me. I mean, I would like one hand closing, but it's not a deal breaker for me. So that's pretty much it. Just to talk about the value, I guess, a little bit. The value, I think, is really good. It, I think I got this for around 150 but a couple weeks ago, I hope it's still on sale. I saw this on sale at Smoky Mountain Knife Works for like 120 and that's crazy. That That's like stock Benchmade bug out price, and the whole comparison between the Deca and the bug out was really just like, okay, the bug out is a little bit cheaper with cheaper materials, while the Deca is more expensive with 20 CV and G10. And so when the 20 CV and G10 knife costs the same as the plastic and S30V knife, you know, that might be a lot of competition for Benchmade. So I think that's really good, but that might've just been on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I don't really know. But so my overall takeaways from this knife is the blade. I wish it was a little bit thinner behind the edge, just it would have made cutting tasks a lot more use or a lot easier. It would have stayed sharper longer and it would have got sharper to begin with. The I did notice some edge rolling in this knife, so I think this 20 CV might be a little soft. Other than that, the blade shape is great. I like the finish of this knife. I really like how it looks. Ergonomics have been solid, not a deal breaker. They are very good just right here, and they're also good in a pinch grip, and they are good in different grips like a reverse grip just because it's one finger groove and then straight like that. And I think that when you have a knife, uh, let me give a good example here. I guess this works. When you have a knife like this with three finger grooves right here, yes, it pro usually feels good like this, but when you wanna do any grip other than just a normal hammer or saber grip or hammer or saber grip, it kind of messes up and fails in that. And so that's why I just like overall straight, simple ergonomic lines. And so as you guys can see, the things I care about the most are the blade, the cutting ability, and that includes the edge geometry, thickness behind the edge, stuff like that and the ergonomics of the knife. And I think that this knife both does those pretty good, but it can be improved. And so I guess if Hogue is gonna make a 2.0 and they are watching this video, I don't know. Those are the main things I would suggest. And I would love to see a hollow grind just so it won't thicken up over time. But that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching this. We are closing in on 500 subscribers. So if you don't mind, please hit, the, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.